Why are you trying to be a cop? I'm not trying to be a cop. You're not. Who else has red and blues? So he's a, I want to be a cop, it's not a cop. <laughs> we gotta figure out you're just so trying to pick up chicks. Whether it's to get a date or to get out of a speeding ticket, some folks hope pretending to be a cop will get them what they want. We're taking a look at four times fake police officers were caught in lies on body cam by real law enforcement. Welcome to After Hours, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Sam Goldberg. We begin today's After Hours in Indian River County, Florida. A deputy stopped James Tedesco the 4th in November 2021 for speeding on I-95. He has some trouble finding his driver's license, but no trouble finding his firefighter credentials. Deputy Gruber with the New York County Sheriff's Office, just letting you know this track stop speed audio is recorded. You have your license and registration. Is that your driver's license? Right. Why are we running red and blue lights? Okay. Why are you running red and blue lights? Oh, okay. That's why I asked me for something. For what? For, the, for a fire. I, 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 so I worked for them that day. I just retired for the fire department. So Where are you coming I from? I'm coming from, I'm coming from North. Where's North? Yeah, I just came from Mims, Florida. Who's North? You just said I'm, I came from North. I mean, I came, I just turned around and came from North to South. Yeah. I came from Mims, Florida. Okay, and why are we running code? Right. You see the issue we're having? Yeah, I got you, I got you. See, so, yeah, it's my fault. So you're doing 100 mile an hour with lights and sirens. Well, lights. You, you weren't running sirens. So why are you trying to be a cop? Uh, You're not. Who else has red and blues? Fire department. Is fire this department. a fire department vehicle? No. Does this fly in New York? This, this, it does? They don't have a problem. Well, I'll make a phone call real quick. You hang tight. James says he was recently retired from the fire department in New York City and that he has police lights on his vehicle for work he's now doing in Florida. The deputy finds the whole thing fishy and goes back to his patrol car to do some digging. When he comes back to James's SUV, the audio on his body camera was still off, but we can see him ask James to get out of his car. You'll notice he's wearing an FDNY sweatshirt. So you're not in the ACC vehicle, and you're not in your story. I asked you where you came from, all you would tell me is up north. And then after the third time I asked you where up north means, you stated Mims. Do you live in Mims? What were you doing in Mims? All right. Actually, let me even back it up one more further, real quick, just to cover all bases. Real quick. All right. Have you ever been read your rights? All right. You have the right to remain silent. Do you understand that? Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. Do you understand that? You have the right to talk to a lawyer, have a lawyer pre present with you while you are being questioned. Do you understand that? If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before questioning. Do you understand that? If you decide to answer any of the questions now without a lawyer present, you still have the right to stop answering at any time and speak with a lawyer. Do you understand that? You may use any of these rights during this interview. With these rights being read to you, do you understand them and do you wish to speak to me? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, no, you're good. I messed up. That's all I'm at, you know. So, I'm, I, I, I want to connect these dots. Yeah, yeah. Why were you in Mint? I was fishing. You were yeah, fishing in Mims. Like Fort Pierce. Then I came up to Mims to go fishing. You were in Fort Pierce. Right, my came up to Mims to go fishing. Firehouse up here. Right? And now you're back. going back to where? Back Miami. I'm going 
Fort Pierce and then North Miami. Yes. Your, your first stop's Fort Pierce. Do you yes. live in Fort Pierce? I have a fireman has a house there. Okay, so you live in Fort Pierce, and then you're and then you're going. Your end goal is to go to Miami. Where do you work at in Miami? I don't work in Miami. What are you doing going to Miami then? So when I asked you earlier, you said you now work in Miami. So that was a lie. I was going to a fire in Miami. That's for Miami. What's the phone number to their station? Their station. Where you work at? Thanks, buddy. What's what's your what's the phone number to your station? in here right now until we figure all this out. Got it? Alright, hang tight. You saw him running? What? You saw him running? Oh, 100%. Is that the only light he has? Yeah, it's red, blue, red, blue. I'm taking it. This is great knowledge for me. But I'm gonna call his. I'm gonna call and make sure he's actually employed. He just tried whispering. As soon as you walked away, he came up to me. And he goes, "Hey, uh, you know, I was in 9/11 and all this stuff. Could you please work with me?" Blah blah. I don't think he's active. I've got, I've got his ID on my seat. I don't think he even smoked like a firefighter. Is there weed in there? No. Oh, oh cigarettes. Okay. Since COVID, I have COVID. I can't smell much. What's up? You guys smell something. Hello? Well, hey, do me a... Fire Department New York City expires February 1st. Hi, is this a fire station? Hi, this is Deputy Gruber with the New River County Sheriff's Office. Is there a lieutenant or somebody I can speak to? Thank you, sir. Well, he gave me an active number to a fire station. He may be, but still, you're Dude, in Florida. Dude, this is funny. You're in Florida, man. How you doing, sir? Is this a lieutenant for the fire station? That's fine. That's fine. If, you, if you're acting in command or something. So, I've got a real issue here. I'm a deputy for the sheriff's office in Indian River County, Florida. I am a deputy for Indian River County in, in Florida. Do you have his ID on you? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Do you know a James J. the Fourth Ted Ted Tedesco? How, is that how you pronounce that? Tedesco. Tedesco. Tedesco, it's T-E-D-E-S-C-O. Yeah, James J. the fourth. You're, is he an active firefighter at your department? Okay. He's a retired member, so he's not active. He's not active with you guys. Yeah, he's uh, running lights and sirens down an interstate, telling me he's on his way to a fire in Miami. In his personal vehicle. All right. Can, yep, he's in his personal car. Which, but can you do me one more favor just to help this whole situation out? Was he active with you during 9 11? So after 9 11. Ask him how many guys. Yeah, 
Oh yeah, he tried name dropping that he was a firefighter during 9-11 and all that, so he was asking for forgiveness. The officer confers with some other deputies on scene and a supervisor on the phone. He then checks with James to make sure it's alright for them to search his SUV. During that conversation, James reveals that his father, James Tedesco III, known as Jim, is an executive of Bergen County in New Jersey, the head of the county government. A position that his father still holds today. All right, sir. Hang tight. All right. So right now you're not under arrest. You can send me to search your vehicle to make sure there's nothing else that I need to worry about if you are cut loose. You don't have a problem with that. I have two guns. I have two guns. Okay. Where are they located? They're in the cases in the back. In the cases in the back seat. And then one's in the trunk. Okay. Like I said, I want to search the vehicle and make sure there's nothing else dangerous, hazardous, or any of that stuff. So there's two firearms back seat of the vehicle oh, like in, the in the case, in the back, in the back, in the back trunk area. Right. That's it. Nothing else? There's marijuana. And there's marijuana in the vehicle. How much marijuana? Uh, less than an ounce. Okay. All right. Well, Let me shut this. Okay. Like you loosen this up on your hair, dude. Yep. Give me one. Go. Here, go up. Yeah, just turn around. Which one? That was my dip All right. Hey Tommy, come here for a sec. I'm gonna loosen these up for him. And I just want you here. I'm gonna do two handcuffs to help your shoulders out. Do me a favor, hop back up, and then, uh, I can tell you, I can tell you, I can just I'll tell you where the marijuana is. You're fine. They'll, they'll search it. If they find it, I'll that's let you know. That's all I got. Okay. If that's, like I said, all I got. we can work with that. So, I wasn't trying to be you know, I apologize. I, I, okay. My family told me. So, all right. Let me get you to hop up there. Perfect. All right. Hang tight for me, all right? When the deputies searched James's car, they found a treasure trove of police and fire gear. Deputies pulled an official-looking NYPD jacket out of the back, along with a firefighter jacket. Practically everything has an NYPD logo on it, including two backpacks. They laid out and inspected the guns that James told them he had, but also found brass knuckles and the weed he'd warned them about. A box with more than 1,000 bullets was found in the trunk, along with a large fireman's jacket and helmet. The deputies also found a bag containing at least two silver badges, although it's unclear what they said on them. James James was charged with false personation and possession of less than 20 grams of cannabis. The impersonation charge was dropped and he pled no contest to the marijuana possession. He was given time served and his driver license was suspended for six months. I want to thank Morgan and Morgan for sponsoring this episode of After Hours and for sending me the sweet hat. Uh, Mikey, if you could zoom in on that. Thank you. Uh, every week with After Hours, these people on the body cams we cover, it proves just how scary and unpredictable the world can be. And let's say, unfortunately, if you're ever injured or if you've ever been injured, you can turn to Morgan & Morgan. They're America's largest personal injury firm with over a thousand attorneys. Now, how do they have so many attorneys, you might be wondering? That's a really good question. That is because they win and they win a lot. In the past few months, Morgan & Morgan saw verdicts of $12.2 in Florida, $26 million in P and 6.8 million in New York. Mind you, these are all considerably higher than the highest insurance offer. Also, their fee is absolutely free unless you win. You can start a claim and see how much it could be worth all on your phone in eight clicks or less. They've modernized the personal injury claim process. So to start a claim, go to forthepeople.com slash after hours or click the link in the description and in the pinned comments. Next, we're heading to Miamisburg, Ohio, south of Dayton. This one's a little different. We're actually going to get a rundown of what happened from a witness before we ever see the suspect. It's June 2024, and an Ohio State trooper responds to a gas station where 52-year-old Dennis Mead was stopped by police. The trooper speaks with law enforcement on the scene, and then a witness who says Dennis tried to ram his minivan and run them off the road. So, the lights are off right now, but... Yeah, handcuffs on the spotlight, radio, um, and I don't know if like the radios work or anything. 
I don't know if this was in the. Was this one? That in was the, in the trunk. In the trunk. That's okay. red and blue. Oh. And that works. I just verified it. Yeah, he's even got the guardian angel light. That's what I was yeah. looking at right there. Is yeah. It red and blue, or is oh, it? it's red and blue. I'm no. sure it is. Right. Nah. Well, there's yeah. blue, blue and orange. Hey, he's even got a thin blue line coaster. He's got that thin blue line. line hats, beanies, yeah. jackets, yeah. shirts. He's got a patch from New York Police Department. He says that this should all be on video. Well, but, yeah, because we're going to seize the car. That's what's yeah. going to happen. But he said that, we're taking that. that there should be a memory card in there. And I said, so that doesn't do us any good here. He said there should be a way to play it back on there, but he's not sure. So. Well, he's got zip ties in the back, like a full blown. Back. He's got some gloves over here for evidence collection. That's not the way. I'm just making fun. Good. Advice, then the suspect's gonna be the RO. So I can contact Denzel. Does he have a ID on him? Yes. I'm gonna give him a minute, sir. Okay. All right. All right, sir. So. What we're gonna do with us, okay? Since I'm gonna end up taking over this investigation, I don't know if you've already filled a statement. <laughs> Just out. redo it over. So basically, what I'm Same gonna want, you okay? Yeah. Is try to be as descriptive as possible. Okay. What's gonna happen is whenever you get done with it, mm -hmm. I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna ask you probably quite a bit of questions. That's fine. And uh, if right, you can man. try to tell me, so where exactly did this occur? So at? I work so, at Aaron's up in Miamisburg. Okay. Like Ball, Best Buy. All so I went to my work to pick something up from the coworkers. She gave me some for the kids and the cats and whatever. So I go, I leave out, take a left, and then you take the right because you can only take the right to get to the light there. Right. So I'm getting on the highway there and to go he, he, yeah, to come here and he about ran into me. So he's looking at me in like in the mirror. And I'm like, you know, back up you're too close. I don't want to with that. So and then when I turned to go to get on the highway, he took a sharp turn and tried to ram me. Okay. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, it's gonna be like this. So we get on the highway, and he tries to hit me like another five or six times on the highway. Okay. And then he cuts on his lights and yanks it to the shoulder. He cut off a car and yanked over to the shoulder until I got past him and he slid behind me. And I'm like, you're not a cop, I'm not saying Right. <laughs> and then he followed me up to Walmart. So pretty much a lot of this, a lot of this occurred all, from 725 all, to yeah. Austin or all the way up All the way down here. Okay. All the way down So he tried to hit you multiple times. Yeah, and then he him. was trying to go around me and get in front of me. I wasn't letting him have so, I was pacing traffic. The yeah, next you had day. your wife, girlfriend. Girlfriend, two kids. Girlfriend, two kids yep. in a car. Okay. All right, yeah. So what I'll have you do then, um, print your name for me. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and I'll fill out the rest and then just say on and then just start kind of right down in here. Just tell me yeah, what happened. that's okay. the start. I got you. And then, you uh, sign all the I'll, I'll have you do that whenever I come back, okay? And then when we're getting on the highway, he takes a sharper turn to go around and he tries to hit me. And I'm like, the the problem? Right. Like, I literally, um, I was looking at him in the mirror and he's like throwing his hand up and I'm like this, like you're too close. I was telling him too close, back up. That's all I did. Okay. And then we got on the highway and then it got stupid. Right. Um, did he activate any lights? Yes. Okay. Yes, he did. He had his headlights blinking and then he had the rear. Because when he pulled over, I seen the rear of it was lit up. And I'm like, what the <laughs> So you said he had, there was his His lights? rear, like on the trunk there, the okay. lid, they were on in his front headlights. They were strobing. So rear trunk. That's the only ones and, I And uh, what color were they? They were, I want to say yellow or red. Red and orange maybe. I don't know. Like a, It was weird looking. That's what made me know he wasn't a cop. Okay. Like, you ain't. <laughs> and then you said his front, the, um, the headlights, headlights were blinking. Okay. Now, can you guys check his dash cam and see, too? We're, 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 I can tell you this. We're seizing the whole car. Yeah. 
our car's armed. So like we're gonna go through and get a warrant to take everything out. We're, we're all the police equipment still is gonna come with us, but everything else, like with the dash camera and so forth, yeah. Yeah, it's all open day, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. What all does he have? I was wanting to look, but I was like, I don't want to get in trouble. Like, I mean, um, he's got a couple different radios, handcuffs, flexi cuffs. You can see the traffic vest. He had a gun on him. Um, so he's going to be a cop that's not a cop. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. Well, I haven't talked to him yet. So, uh, yeah, if he would have followed me to Walmart all the way, because he right. stopped at the street before Walmart, where you can turn in by McDonald's, I went to the next street over, and I watched him. He turned in and pulled right back out. Okay. And then I spun around and came back out and seen which way he was going, and it's big boy here. Hello, sir. How's it going? Pretty good. How are you? I've had better days. Been better? Yep. I totally get you. Uh, what's your name? Dennis Mead. Dennis. Perfect. All right, sir, so I'm just going to read you something. I'm not sure if the other officer did or not, but since I'm going to be talking with you, that's what we do, okay? Um, so you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say or do will be used against you in the court. That's where this body cam footage cuts off, but we now know that Dennis had been busted previously for allegedly impersonating a cop. He also had a pistol on him that he wasn't allowed to have. Dennis was charged with impersonation. A judge entered a not guilty plea on his behalf during a June hearing. He was given bond and has to wear a GPS monitor. He's also due back in court in September. Next, we're in Metro Atlanta. A Norcross police officer spotted Daryl Henderson directing traffic around a work crew in February 2023. Male dressed in police uniform directing traffic. Hey, how you doing? Hey, just trying to figure out who you worked for. Oh, Tabitha. The city of Tabitha? 415-10-8. Okay. Y'all got a park in here? No, I just work with this crew, wherever they go. Okay. That's not a city I'm familiar with. I didn't know we had uh, part-time jobs from another... Yeah, where, we work everywhere, look, Where is that at? Tabitha South Georgia. So I'm, not trying to make, I'm not trying to make a big deal out of it. Yeah, yeah, we're work all over. It's just super, uh, super strange because it's that? usually either us or it's the SO. I mean, y'all can do it. It's just that wherever they go all over the state, I go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You just got your, uh, like, police ID? Yeah. Just put everybody at, at ease and we'll... Yeah, I go. Oh, shoot. Man doing traffic. So it's a city. Yeah, city of Cal. And you're I actually retired from the cab, but just to have my certification. All right. It's just the city of Tablet. Yeah, I got you. Work there, or you just only do this. I work there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Reserve. You know, the reserves are everywhere. I got you. Actually, retire from the cab. But you want to have your certification. You can for these on your jacket. All right. Daryl Henderson. All right. Appreciate it. Appreciate you, man. Thanks. The officer and a colleague go back to his patrol unit where they try to find out more about the tiny town Daryl says he's from, more than two hours away from where they are. I was just calling because we're out with a police officer that says he works for Talbotson Police Department. I was just trying to confirm his, um, confirm he worked for you guys. Yeah, he's directing traffic in our jurisdiction, which is pretty strange, and I was just confirming that he was a police officer that works uh, for you guys. This is Daryl Henderson. Are you 151 unit code 4? Code 4. 131. 
So he's no longer a police officer there? March 25th. Okay. February 8th? 5950 Hickory Springs Drive. Thank you. March 25th. So you were actually supposed to be out the street, though. I, I just I just talked to them and they said you were terminated February eighth. Oh man, I'm preserved. Terminated from part time. Like you don't work for them oh, as a really? police officer. Damn. So. Man, I... What's going on with that? Uh, I actually went to reserve for part time. For part time to reserve. So who can we call? Uh, I guess nobody now. I'm terminated. Come on, man. <laughs> that was like a week ago. It's like 10 days ago. Yeah, I guess nobody. Damn. So who are you working for now? Huh? Who are you working for right now? Just under my own certification now. I don't, I don't, but you but you identify yourself as a police officer for that city. I really don't. I put this stupid vest on, man. It still got the patch on there. Okay. So you're lying to me then? Huh? So you were lying to me then? No, I'm actually reserved for them, but I guess they terminated me. No. You, that's, that's, lying. Uh, that's the part that he's saying that you're lying about. That you knew that you were terminated. But you're uh, you're acting under the right. that you okay. work for them, right. correct? <laughs> so the, 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 what are we supposed to do with you? Four thirty one. This is I had an accident, man. I had an accident. My leg was broken. One dude really hurt my leg right there. I mean. Can't you go work somewhere else? I mean, I am, but man, I just don't want to lose my house, man. Great, once you want to go for it. Yeah, seriously, I just uh, had an accident July the third. Great, once you want to negative, do not return to Georgia. Running drunk with me now. Well, you got your ID on you? Yeah. So it turns out Daryl used to be a police officer, but he's not anymore. And since he's making it seem like he's still on duty, he's now in trouble. Hey man, if you've been straight with me from the yeah. beginning, this had been a lot easier. You kind of forced my hand at this point. I mean, I got a, I got a something job to do, man. All right, I'm about to start all over. Man. So we're gonna, we're gonna have to take you in for that. All right, you mind taking off your belt? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll handle all that. We're not, like, in a hurry. Henderson faced a charge for impersonating a public officer or employee, which is a felony. He was released on a $5,600 bond. His court case is still pending in Gwinnett County. We end today's episode of After Hours in New Mexico. That's where investigators with the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office stopped Rico Trey Sean Dukes and detained him in April 2023. Keep your hands up! Follow my command, step out slowly. Keeping your hand up, close your door and walk towards me. If you reach for that gun, you will be shot. Keep your hands up. Keep them up higher, man. Stop. Stop right there, turn around. Do not reach for that firearm. Don't reach for it. Anybody else in the car? Go and let up. Coming back this way. Walk backwards. Shift to your left, man. I'll explain everything in a minute. Weapons on you, man. Mm -hmm. All units listening, one in custody, be 
vehicle is clear. According to prosecutors, Rico had been pretending to be a deputy on his Tinder profile. Evidence showed photos from the dating app showing multiple shots of Rico in a uniform. Detectives brought Rico in for questioning. It can be hard to hear him on the deputy's body camera, but Rico does admit to buying the uniform at a local store and taking photos of himself. But he swears it's all just to promote the sheriff's office. So, can you tell me a little bit about what's going on today? You don't know? Okay. Um, can you tell me why you're in a Bernalillo County Sheriff's Department uniform? You bought it from Kaufman's? Tell me about that. When did you buy it? How long? Some months ago? Do you know like what month it was? Okay. And why did you get the uniform? There's no promotional stuff. Promotional oh, stuff? Yeah. What do you mean, promotional it's stuff? Like stuff. Okay. Like video okay. So to promote BCSO? Yeah. Yeah. And do you work for the Sheriff's Department? And how do you promote BCSO? Like videos. Videos and stuff. Videos and stuff? What kind of videos do you take? Um, just like the building, BCSO. I get like pictures of them and stuff. Okay. Have you taken a lot of videos and stuff? I'm just starting. No. Oh, just starting? Have you taken any yet? Yeah. And with the wearing of the uniform, um, how did you get the idea to start doing these promotional videos you're talking about? Random idea. Random idea? Yeah. Um, and when you went into Kaufman's, did you have to show any identification that you worked for the Sheriff's yeah, Department? Yeah, I asked him questions. I didn't have any. I was just getting some stuff with promotional videos for BCSO. Okay. And, and they were okay just selling it to you without any identification? Okay. So, do you know it's a crime to impersonate a law enforcement officer? Right. And so, wearing the uniform. How, tell me about your mindset with that. I think too much about that. Okay. That wasn't my plan. That wasn't your plan? Yeah. Okay. Um, and what about the, the gun on your hip and stuff? And that's, that's my personal. That's your personal yeah. gun? Okay. The detective gets down to the heart of the matter and matters of the heart. Rico's been using photos of himself in a deputy uniform and even inside a patrol car. So I, I know about your Tinder profile. Um, tell me about posting all those pictures. Are they all of you? All of you in your uniform? Um, and that's this uniform here. Do you have any other uniforms at the house? Just this one? your middle name? And so this is you, right? Okay. Um, this picture here, whose name is this? One you just randomly saw? Yeah. And then this one. Is this you? Yeah. Okay. Um, and is this the same shirt and hat? Okay. 
And is this the same gun that you were wearing today? All right. And then this one, is this you as well? Okay. And then this one, that's you as well? Okay. Um, and so why did you post these pictures of you in uniform on Tinder? Just you. Um, and were you, were you saying that you were with BCSO? Cause yeah, I told you. You told a few people. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, how many people have you met up with in this uniform? Met up with? Yeah, from like Tinder. Yeah. You haven't met up with any of them? This is going to be the first time? Yeah. Okay. Um, And so you don't have any family or anybody um, that you know that works for the sheriff's department. Yeah, no. no. Okay. Because um, there's some information that we have that you know somebody on the department from here. Yeah. You don't have any family, any friends that work on the department? No? Okay. Um, and so you don't know who owns that uh, Tahoe that you took a picture of? No. And you don't remember what address it was at? No. And this friend, does she think it's a she, right? Yes. Does she think that you work for the sheriff's department? I would assume. You would assume? Yeah. Why would you assume that? Because of the pictures. The pictures? Yeah. Is there any other reason? No? Um, did, did you tell her that you work for the sheriff's department? Her, yeah. You did? Okay. And what did you say you did? Specify, you didn't specify. What do you mean? Okay. Okay. What did you tell her you did? And you identified yourself as uh, Officer Dukes, correct? Okay. I just wanted to make sure. The detectives then leave Rico to think for a bit while they discuss the situation with some colleagues. When they come back, the detective wants to clarify some things, and this time Rico's a little more honest. A couple more questions for you. Um, when did you post your Tinder profile? Two weeks ago. And uh, how many people are you currently talking to? Four or five. Four or five. Mm -hmm. Speak of my years. Four or five. I'm sorry. Four or five. Um. And over the past two weeks, how many have you talked to overall? Overall, maybe 10 or 11. 10 or 11? The detectives already have most of the answers to her questions and catch Rico in lies again and again. At the end of the day, we got to figure out. Not to be a pink stuff, right? Like, just, we got to figure out you're just so trying to pick up chicks. Right. Or there's more to this. Right. That's what we have to figure out. That's, that's what my goal okay. is to figure that out. Okay. If I was to ask you, which one is it? Or are you just some guy trying to score chicks? No, or no. No? no. no. Um. So your hat, it has our very old patch on it. Tell me about that. Okay, and so they were selling that hat at Coffin's? Um, and what information did you need for the purchase of the gear? I just told them I was doing it for uh, promotional stuff. That right. What information did you have to provide them, though? Just your name? Yeah. 
Did you have to give them anything else? What else? Okay. Um, and do you live with anybody else? No. Do you have any other gear at your residence that could be viewed as law enforcement gear? No, just these two. What about a black tactical vest? No. Tell me about the vest that you have, that you're wearing in a picture on Facebook. The one that's on Facebook. You're wearing black. Mm -hmm. There's a black tactical vest. Tell me about it. Dark green? Okay. Tell me about that vest. Oh, well, there's a picture I use. Where's this vest at? Oh, uh, Whose vest is it? Uh, it's a picture I use. Okay, so you, you have a picture of you wearing this vest. How did you get this picture? Uh, I found it off the internet. You found it off the internet? That picture, yeah. Is it a picture of you? No, it's not a picture of you on your no. Facebook? Okay. That's the one I have of the best. That's, that's the picture I used from the internet. Okay. Is your uh, child a boy or a girl? He's a boy. Boy? How old is he? He'll be three in September. And so the picture on Facebook is not of you and your son with you in a vest. Unless it's from, oh, I know what you're talking about, from uh, security when I worked at New Mexico Protective Force. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be, here's the thing, it's going to be good for you to just come forward with stuff for us. No, I got you. Cause mm -hmm. We're trying to work with you. I didn't know which one you guys were talking about. Do you have but pictures of more than one vest on Facebook? No, just that one. Okay. So, like I said, this is your opportunity. We have a lot of the answers already. Right. This is your opportunity to be honest and cooperate right. with us. Um, so, telling me that it's a random picture you got off right, the answer. internet, mm -hmm. and then going, oh, that's actually from when I worked at security. Right. Be honest with me, because I know a lot of the answers I'm already asking. I know you guys know the answers. I just didn't know which picture y'all talked about. Do you still have any gear from your other jobs with uh, New Mexico Protective Forces or Desert Wolf? No. Do you still have any of that gear? No. That's why it's like, it, it, you said with Desert Wolf you did investigations? No, with New Mexico Protective Force. New Mexico Protective Force investigation. Just like patrols, yeah. So did you ever have to interview anybody? No. No? No. So if we do a warrant on your residence, are we going to find any other gear that can be construed as no. law enforcement? No. No vests? No, no. No more Just duty belts? Have one. No holsters? No shirts? No hats? Nothing belonging to any other agency. No. Nothing for APD. No. Rico pleaded guilty to impersonating an officer and carrying a gun on school grounds. He was given a deferred sentence of two and a half years. That means he's on supervised probation, and if he violates it, he goes to jail. According to the court, a probation officer will be monitoring Rico's social media, including his dating accounts, to make sure he doesn't do this again. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Law and Crime After Hours is researched, written, and produced by Savannah Williamson. Video editing is done by V. Mikey Dininger. I'm Sam Goldberg. We'll see you next week. And I'm like, you're not a cop. I'm not a cop. Right.